Hello everybody and welcome back to another awesome episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to hopefully eliminate all of the micro stuttering that you are likely experiencing within Microsoft Flight Simulator over the last few updates. So stick around guys because this is really important information that's really going to make a big difference especially for NVIDIA users. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. All right, you guys, so as the sim continues to load, I want to start out first by saying all credit of this information goes to EasyJet Sim Pilot. Thank you very much for your very awesome video that he posted here. I'm simply sharing it here on my platform as well to make sure the word is spread because I know this has been a very, very big deal. It has been a very big problem for me. I've seen it in VR and as well as uh, in 2D and uh, EasyJet Sim Pilot's Resolution here made a huge difference for me. There are certain areas that I'm still experiencing some stuttering, but nowhere freaking near what it was. It was so bad, you guys. It was so bad, and his fixes made a huge difference. So let's go ahead and get started into it. Once again, you guys, this is EasyJet Sim Pilot's information. All credit for this information goes to him. Make sure that you guys uh, find his a link to his channel. will be down in the description below. Give him a like. Give him a subscribe. Give him some support. Give him a big thank you for me. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get after the information that was delivered, though. So first off, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go straight to options. I'm going to jump right into it. And for those of you who don't know what a micro stutter is, it's not quite a lag or a frame loss. So you'll be flying along and you just notice little twitches. Some of them can be pretty significant, like they can be very significant jolts, if you will, where the aircraft sort of jumps across the ground. Uh, or over the scenery versus flying nice and smooth. And EasyJet Sim Pilot nailed it right on the head. It usually tends to happen as you are coming in on approach. So if you are noticing a ton of stuttering or a ton of, of weird frame issues when you're coming in for approach on your final destination, that is very likely this is going to resolve this for you. However, I also noticed a bunch of this on takeoff in certain areas as well as during taxi. And this seemed to just about eliminate all of it. All right. So let's go ahead and get into it once again. So we're going to go to general options. You're going to come down to data. From the data tab, you want to come down to rolling cache. If you have rolling cache enabled, which I'm going to go ahead and turn mine on, it was turned off for a reason. Um, I cleared all of my rolling cache, you guys, and the cache, which is what we're going to do today. So you may find yourself in the same situation that I am here, where after you've completed the steps, you may need to come in here and turn it back on. So I'm making sure that everything is exactly as you guys saw it or as it was when I was completed. So I'm gonna reset this back to 10 gigs. I cleared this back out and turned everything off before the start of this video. So we're gonna go apply and save. Um, but what you are looking to do here is you wanna make sure that you delete, okay? So your steps right now doing this for the first time should be going to data, rolling cache, if it's on and hit delete, okay? Um, someone who may have this off, by the way, I always recommend using rolling cash if you have a decent internet connection. If you do not have a uh, decent internet connection, this is usually where you would turn rolling cash off. Um, but uh, I do recommend leaving it on as often as possible. If you notice some significant impacts that you can come and turn it off. What will happen if you turn this off is your scenery may take a bit longer to load as you're flying along. So at that point, you may notice... Um, uh, scenery draw lag. So you'll see trees and things popping up at, at when you're right over them and things like that. So, so we're going to hit apply and save. That's all we're going to be doing here. It's going to update it. You guys can see here, the rolling cache is being processed. All right. And we'll, we will revisit the steps when we are complete for Microsoft flight simulator purposes. We are done with it for the moment. So we're just going to dump that out of there. And next we are going to move over to the NVIDIA control panel. 
from the video control panel, what you guys are gonna wanna do is find the shader cache size and you're going to set this to disabled. We will be re-enabling it later. The reason why you disable it right now is to prevent any other programs or simulators, games, et cetera, that may be running in the background from rewriting to that cache file. We do not want it doing that. So we're going to go ahead and hit disabled. Make sure you guys hit apply to actually make the changes take effect. Now, at this point, what I want you guys to do, I'm not going to do it, but listen carefully, please. At this point, you guys, if you're doing this for the first time, you need to restart your computer and then come back to this video. So restart your computer right now. Okay, so I'm assuming that you guys are all back. Let's go ahead and continue on. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to your C drive, your users, whatever your username is, app data fo folder, find the local low, scroll down and find NVIDIA. Not NVIDIA Corporation, just NVIDIA, DX Cache. You're gonna open that up, delete any contents that are in it. Do not worry about what simulator it is, any game that you are running, by the way, that has cache. This, you guys may see a ton of different entries. Usually you're gonna see an entry for any game or simulator that you have played that is using this particular cache folder. Yes, you will need to, um, recache it the next time you launch the simulator. So if you, after completing these steps, if you notice that one of your games or Sims is running a bit slower the first time you launch it, it is because it is rebuilding those cache folders. However, pretty much any game or simulator is going to benefit from this process. It is, it clears out the old junk. So you're gonna delete all the contents, contents in DX cache. We're gonna go back to Nvidia, go to GL cache, same steps, delete, you, if, you guys can delete any folders that are in here as well. You do not have to leave the folder name. Uh, that is one thing that EasyJet Sim Pilot did is he opened up each individual folder and deleted them, uh, the contents with them. You can actually delete the folder themselves. Whenever the simulator or game relaunches, it will recreate its associated file path, okay? So we have the NVIDIA local or local NVIDIA DX cache and GL cache are now empty. Next, what we're gonna do is go to app data again and go into local low. And again, find NVIDIA. Now, the, everybody may not have this, okay? But I want all of you to check all three of these locations. And again, there's another DX cache. Clear it out, and we're good to go. Now, I am one who's very big on refresh and any kind of anything that might impact a registry change or Mac change, anything like that. So I do recommend, however, this next step is not required. I do recommend at this point restarting your SIM or you restarting your computer once again. Okay, so for those of you who are doing that, we see you in a second. For the rest of us, we have now completed all the steps required in order to do this. So now we are gonna go back to our shader cache size with inside the NVIDIA control panel under manage 3D settings. We are now going to set it back to the driver default or whatever you had it as before. Hit apply, make sure the changes are saved. Notice that I am under the global settings and I do recommend that you guys do that as well. Okay, and once that is complete, we can now close the NVIDIA control panel and relaunch Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, now, as we get back into the simulator, guys, I'm gonna actually, let me let this load back to the uh, dashboard and then I'll be back with you guys. All right, and now that we are back inside the simulator, I also do wanna remind any everybody and everyone that, uh, there is never ever a one fix all, okay? It's not a one-stop shop. Experiences may vary. Some may work for others and this may not work for everybody. For AMD, you guys are gonna have to figure out where those uh, cache files are stored. I do not run AMD video card, uh, so just keep that in mind. All right, so now we're gonna go back to options as we talked about before, basically repeating the steps from the beginning of the video. We're gonna go into data once again, scroll down to the bottom, and again, this may be disabled for you at this point. So make sure that you turn it back on, set whatever your rolling cash limit is. I have mine set to 10 gigs, usually works out pretty well. You can go higher or lower. Um, lower, you may experience some of that starting that we were talking about. The higher the number, the better. However, the more hard drive space on your PC that is then allocated to the shader cache, which is then removed from available space on your computer. So keep that in mind. Once that space is cached and allocated, that is space that is reserved for that particular storage. All right, so just keep that in mind. All right, now, what to expect moving forward here, guys, is that you will very likely see an increase temporarily uh, as the shader uh, si or shader cache is rebuilt. You may experience 
uh, longer load times into airports, especially larger airports, larger areas with a ton of scenery and things like that, uh, you will very likely see an increase in load time. That makes sense. That is to be expected. Again, it's the simulator then building that cache uh, for your experience. However, when you are now in flight and uh, on your approaches, or if you're like me and you were even experiencing it on takeoff, you should then see a pretty significant improvement in stuttering. I saw an improvement on both 2D as well as virtual reality. Um, that is both on the Pimax Crystal and the 8KX, which we'll also be comparing later this week, guys. So make sure you stick around for that video. I think uh, my thoughts on that may surprise some of you. Okay, no, I'm not saying everyone jump to the uh, crystal. There's going to be quite a debate, and I don't know that I have an actual answer for you. So stick around for that video. You guys might find it interesting. However, definitely stating that I saw an improvement on both VR as well as um, 2D. The other thing is for other flight simulation experts here or, or players here, uh, I also happen to notice a significant difference in DCS world. That's why I cleared the entire directory for me. Um, so that was another pretty big advantage that I was very happy about. Um, DCS world last night, I was flying around it in the crystal and I was noticing some very bad, unfortunately, stuttering. Um, and I flew the DCS world. I flew in the F-16 uh, coming out of Kutasi on a very busy map. And uh, the stuttering was almost non-existent now. And where I was primarily noticing it is down at low altitude, especially when looking out the side windows, for those of you who are DCS pilots, uh, that stuttering smoothed out significantly. There were still certain points where I did notice a little bit of it. I think that's just something that's always been around with DCS, uh, but it was definitely, I would say, 80% uh, reduced, massive reduction in the stuttering. Anyways, once again, guys, thank you again to EasyJet Sim Pilot for your information. You are a valuable member of this community. I'm so happy to be a part of it with you. Um, guys, please, his link, a link to his channel will be down in the description below. Gosh, I can't talk. Below. Make sure you guys give him a like. Make sure you give him a subscribe. Give him some support and some love. Um, and then once again, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, you could kick some of that support and love my way as well. As always, my friends, stay safe and healthy. I'll see you in the next one.